plant-based or pig-based? Let's find out which one's better. Anyone who's gone vegetarian or vegan knows the question, are you gonna miss bacon, Sarnies? This, who make this bacon, supply Greg's and Cafe Nero. They're the ninth biggest plant-based brand in the UK and they just received 15 million pounds in funding. This is the fastest growing food and drink brand in the UK with increased sales of 246%, which is amazing considering that Nestle have just axed two of their plant-based brands because of poor sales. On the other hand, this bacon is famous for sandwiches, animal welfare, and climate change. Piggies have had their own problems too. There's been a lack of skilled workers for abattoirs. We do have to think about the environment. Nitrogen runoff is a problem with intensive pig farming. I'm not sure anyone's actually done an independent life cycle analysis on this, so I don't know if we can judge its environmental credentials accurately yet. Plant-based meats are having problems with repeat purchases, which is understandable when we look at the prices. This costs £3.25 for 105 grams, which is £30 per kilo, while this only costs £2.49 for 240 grams, which is just £10.36 per kilo. Bacon sales have gone down 5.8% over the last 12 months, and the price has gone up 7%. Let's do a taste test. Use a non-stick fry pan. I don't have a non-stick pan. Oh well. <laughs> that smells really bacony. Kind of like just congealed into a lump. Plant-based bacon, cooks a bit weird, bit slimy, looks a bit odd. Smells nice and it has gone crispy too. Some wins there. Pig-based bacon has cooked normally, smells normal and well, I mean it's just bacon isn't it? Whatever they've used to recreate the fat goes a bit slimy and a bit snotty. Not in a nice shiny oily way like that but in a kind of slightly ogie-ish way. Let's just try it. Yeah? I've gone with white sliced bread because I think that's just the standard for a bacon sandwich. Let's try this bad boy. Mmm, that's pretty good. They've got the bacon flavor really good there. Mmm, texture, it's a little bit soft. There's not the crunchy chewiness of bacon. There's not much resistance against your teeth when you eat it. Mmm, mmm. Got more bite. It's saltier. It's richer as well. The depth of flavor is there. The environmental impact of this should be lower. We've also got to remember that's an ultra processed food and that's not. Now when it comes to the nutrition, 100 grams, this is 130 calories and that's 352 calories. 31 grams of fat, 1.7 grams of carbohydrate and 16 grams of protein. Whereas this is 2.9 grams of fat, 7.5 grams of carbohydrate and 16.3 grams of protein. Very similar protein amounts per 100 grams. Way more fat and I'm a lover of fat. I'm giving this an eight out of 10. Seriously, I'm really impressed. The flavor, the crunchiness, it's all really, really good. If you don't eat animals, then that is a really good bacon substitute. Absolutely. If you do eat animals, you can't beat that. Simple as that.